this is a very impressive vehicle. What do you guys call this here? This is a Griffin Technology Demonstrator. We've designed this and built this over a five month period and we've melded three different programs into one vehicle. We've taken the Abrams turret with all of its innate modernization, able to go to the V3 configuration at some point in time when the Army's ready. We've taken an experimental XM360 cannon that was developed for future combat systems. And then we've taken the Ajax chassis from the British UK's program and modified it. And we've melded them all together. So what we've done is taken three programs that have significant investment, over a billion and a half dollars investment in those three programs, and melded them into one program, one uh, conversation piece for our client, the Army. And it really is a conversation piece. We call it a tech demonstrator because it's not a solution. But it is a start point for us to talk about what's good about it, what, what would you change. And so at the end of AUSA, after all the Army leaders have been through here, we're anticipating that we'll come out with some things that we would do differently. And then over the next year, we plan on making the modifications, changes, whatever needs to be done, and then show them something a little different sometime next year. Now, so this is kind of like a concept car, an auto show. This is, hey, these are different cool pieces we can put together in a new way that might give you some ideas for, edit, for a thing you might want to buy, not this thing off the floor, but later on. True, and, and, and the Army has been talking about this for a long time, and they, they've been anxious for industry to do what we would call rapid prototype development. So we built this in five months, and so, if we have an idea of what the Army needs and wants in a fairly succinct manner, we can do a lot of cool things on our dime that will show the Army the art of the possible, the things that they can take advantage of in the way of S&T development that they've already invested in, and then it gives us a launch point for, so what's next? If this is a 60% solution, what would a 90% solution look like? And then show it to them again. And as we refine that, we can do it a whole lot faster with our investment rather than waiting for the Army to come up with a big requirements document, deciding what that requirement ought to look like. Uh, and it gives us some innovation opportunities because we can take these three different kinds of programs, very unique and distinct, meld them together into something that, that the Army would be interested in. Now, point out some of the pieces that come from different programs. For example, that gun you said is from the uh, canceled future combat systems. It was trying to make a lightweight, air deployable kind of tank vehicle. Well, for one thing, uh, it, it was kind of them to loan it to us. Both Ardak and Benet would like to take advantage of their $100 million investment. So if you're talking about a lightweight direct fire cannon with the capability of an Abrams to do things like support the infantry, knock holes in bunkers, uh, knock holes in, in buildings for, for uh, the infantry, uh, then this is a nice way to do it because you can get the weight down so that it is air transportable in a C-17, a couple of of them, or, or even save weight on a ship if you're going to uh, ship it. So that transportability, that ability to get it to the fight is really, really important for the infantry uh, brigade combat teams. So that's the reason we used it. You can also use other cannons on it, but this one is the lightest weight of all of them. Uh, the turret is just like an Abrams. I mean, you get inside of it, if you've got a tanker and he climbs inside of this, it has the touch, the feel, the sensing of an Abrams. So all of the screens, all of the handles, all of the fire control systems are the same. And it can accommodate all the modernization that the Army has invested their money in. And then the chassis itself is an Ajax chassis modified. It's a lighter weight, it's a little bit shorter, but it takes advantage of the suspension system that's gone through a significant test period in in the UK and the engine and transmission have gone through uh, the kind of uh, uh, requirement uh, generation testing that the, 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 the Brits have gone through. So the investment in this demonstrator, this table think piece is, uh, is unique and I don't know that you'll find that kind of investment in a, in a tech demonstrator anywhere. And basically the idea is this would be for the mobile protected firepower concept, which is a vehicle that can be air deployed, move in with light infantry, with airborne troops, and provide them some heavy firepower as they're moving across the country, either on foot or in some of those uh, light off-road vehicles that the Army's buying. Well, we hope that this will lead us to that solution set for the Army. It's not the right solution, but it does give them some ideas and some thoughts on, on what could be good. Take, for instance, the Abrams turret. 
If it's just like an Abrams turret, then you don't have to develop training packages for your soldiers. You don't have to uh, develop any, any log products for your soldiers. It's already done. And that Army invested in that. So that's a neat way for the Army to look at what I really, really need and how best do I do it with the limited resources that they have. I mean, they're really constrained in their, in their funding. And so if we can make it more cost affordable at the upfront piece, that investment that they got to make, that's a positive win for us, industry, and the Army. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're quite welcome. Thank you.